This is an ST7789 display module powered by SPI. Here we have a Raspberry Pi Pico which is currently driving it. Right now this module is set up to display the CPU temperature. Right now it's at room temperature of about 26 degrees. As it increases in uh, temperature, the display will change colour to indicate um, some warnings, basically. So if I take my soldering iron, which I've turned on, and wave it over the CPU where the heat sensor is actually stored, you'll see that the temperature begins to creep up. Now, obviously, I'm not going in contact with the CPU because I don't want to damage it. I just want to raise its temperature to above 30 degrees. And then we should see it turn red, giving us a nice warning. There you go. So rather than risk damaging my Pi uh, further, I will now turn this off and we will see it drop down back to its room temperature while it's displaying um, on the, the screen here. This particular display is 240 pixels by 280 pixels, a number that you need to be aware of if you're driving one of these displays. You can get them at various different resolutions, still using the ST7789 driver model. As you can see, what I've done is taken some single core wire I've soldered it up to these inputs and then I've attached it to the breadboard. Then I've transferred those connections to the pins we require on the Raspberry Pi. On many of these models, you'll find on the board that everything is labelled. And while this font is pretty close, we basically have ground, VCC, SCL, SDA, RES, DC, CS, and BLK. Now the BLK, which stands for background light, basically connects to the 3.3 volt pin right here. And the VCC connects to the same pin, providing again 3.3 volts into the circuit. And the final one is nice and easy to understand because that's just the ground. So that connects to the ground pin, which is around here. I'll give you a proper circuit diagram in a moment. So as I said before, BLK, which can also be BL, stands for backlight. This is simply turned on all the time so we can see our image on the display. SDA is a bi-directional data pin. This is what actually sends and receives all the data over this. Whereas the SCL is the clock. This is what keeps the circuit in time and updating nice and evenly. The RES stands for reset. It is the reset pin or the pull-up pin, whereas CS stands for chip select. This is the Python program that we're using to generate our display's data and everything you need to basically operate it, including changing colors, selecting fonts, etc., etc. You'll find this block of code in the text description of the video, so you can copy and paste it very easily. But with that in mind, we're going to run through. Now, you'll notice that everything I have is very detailed and very commented, so you could literally just download the source code and have a read through it and gain an understanding. Now, the first thing we need to pay close attention to is the pins. This is where and how we connect everything together. We saw on the board that we have CS, DC, RES, SDA, SCL, VCC, and ground. These are the pins that you connect them to. If I put something like ground, then it will work with any ground, but I have specified a very specific pin for you if you want to follow the same setup that I used. If you ever want to know where to find a Raspberry Pi pinout, just head over to Google and type in Pi Pico pinout and select any number of these images. 
you will see that I've given two forms of identification. A very specific pin, which you can find in this chart simply by looking at these grey squares. So you can see that pin 36 will be the fifth down. And that's often how I find these pins, is I just work out where the USB is, I work out which side I want to be on, which are numbered, and then I count down until I get the right pin so I don't get confused. You'll see that CL or CS is at pin 15. So if we look for pin 15, we'll find GP11. So you'll also notice that I've got different conventions here. This will simply identify 3v3, which you can also find 3v3 underscore uh, should not actually be used, but the out should be used. Whereas if we look for GP11, we can scroll down and then these green boxes will see the GP numbers as well. So we do have two different ways of referring to numbers, the grey method and looking for the GP and the names and labels. Personally, I just go for the numbers because they're a little bit easier to think about and organise. So once you've managed to actually get everything plugged into your satisfaction, we then need to go further into our programme. But before we do, you should be aware that I'm not using the standard MicroPython. I am, in fact, using CircuitPython. So all you've got to do is go to circuitpython.org, downloads, and grab the latest version. I'm using 802 on mine. Once you've downloaded the UF2 file, just hold down the boot select button, drag the UF2 file onto the drive that appears as a result. Once it's updated, you're then ready to go. The next thing you're going to need is circuit Python libraries, which you could find out just by going to circuitpython.org forward slash libraries. Uh, make sure you've got the right bundle. I'm using um, 8.x, so that's the one I want. Once you open up that zip file, you'll find a lib. Don't try to copy this over to your Raspberry Pi. You will fill up all its space in no time. So you need to be selective about what you transfer over but you'll find absolutely everything in this library folder. To transfer things over, simply click on your circuit pi drive, go into the lib folder, and as you can see, I've copied over the Adafruit underscore ST7789, which is our driver, and we've copied over Adafruit display text, which contains a number of libraries for uh, bitmaps, uh, labels, scrolling labels, basically everything you need to display text using bitmap fonts. Once this has been copied over, you will then of course incorporate them into your program. The first module we're going to call, and you don't need to add any libraries for this, it's all built into that big UF2 file you copied over, is the microcontroller. This is used to define pins and other bare metal hardware. For this project, we will be using it to call the temperature value from the board itself. So it's literally talking directly to the Raspberry Pi Pico. The board module contains all the names for the pins, so we can reference things in the program using GP15 or other names that are more logical than just remembering pin numbers. The time module is used to manage anything related to timing functions on the device. We simply use it for pausing the program. The terminal AI, or sorry, terminal IO, is an input-output library for the terminal. It is literally designed to display a stream of characters, which we're going to then project onto our display using the display I.O. module, which is, again, something used to manage our display. The bus I.O. module is what manages our SPI. This is our data transfer point. So this is basically our communications library.
Then, of course, we bring in our Adafruit display text and we're going to import it as a label. Um, this is going to then manage our text object so we can update the display. And we have Adafruit ST7789, which is the display driver, which gives basically means we don't have to manually address and understand exactly how the display works. It's all handled for us. The first thing we're going to do is display I.O. release displays. If the display has been used on a previous cycle, then we basically need to say you need to release all of that and you need to be ready to accept new information from us. Here we are defining the pin values. So we've got MOSI, REST, DC, CS. So this is another potential reference for your connection points. As you can see, it is calling the individual pins by board. So the board module is allowing us to call GP11 rather than pin 32 or whatever it is. Next, we display or we define rather the width and the height of our display in pixels. And then we create an SPI bus object, which is assigned to busio.spi, where we grab the clock speed and we grab the MOSI as well. Then we have display bus, which is calling our display IO4 wire protocol, where we get to set the bud rate, we get to send where the commands are going to, we get to set the chipset, and we get to set the reset as well. We then create a display object, so display, and we set it to our driver. We're setting the display bus, the width, the height, and we're setting an offset of the, uh, the display itself, just to make sure that uh, it's not going too far into the corner of the screen. Next, we're going to create an infinite loop that keeps our program running. We're going to create a string object called CPU temp, and we're going to give it a new line character, allowing us to combine everything into a single string object. And then we use the str command to convert microcontroller.cpu.temperature into a string that we can display. We set the font using terminal io.font and then we start our logic statement. We simply ask if microcontroller.cpu.temperature is below 28, then we set the color value to green because it is nice and low. And then we go else, uh, set it to yellow because that means it's not below 28, it's above 28, which means that if it's still below 30, we want to set it to yellow as a warning color. Then we use this next stage of logic, basically asking, is it over 30 degrees? If so, we display the text in red as a nice warning color. We then create a text area where, of course, our text will be generated and created. And we use the object label to create a label. We give it our font. We give it the text we created. We give it a color. And to size the text, I set it to three. So it's three times larger than normal. Next, we need to work out where to position our text. So we go text underscore area and we set this property to one quarter of the width. Now, you could calculate this a lot more accurately than I have, but I'm just ballparking it and this is good enough. And again, I'm going halfway down the display. I could then subtract the height of the text and make it actually center. But for these purposes, this is good enough where we can see everything that's displayed. And then finally, we just display show text area. This is a command that, of course, updates our text directly to our display. And that's it. We just save our PY file, we hit the run button, and we end up with this program. Again, the code will be in the comments um, of the, or sorry, the video description, I should say. It will be in the video description of this video, so you can grab the, um, uh, the entire program from there. Please comment on the video, share the video, promote it. Um, please subscribe to my channel and help me grow so I can make money and thus bring you more impressive and fun projects. Thank you for watching and I really hope you've enjoyed it.